Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to International, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. All right, welcome to Ball and Play, episode number seven, brought to you by Baseball News Club. My name is Sesma, I'm your host. Super excited to bring you the episode this week. Um, like the intro says, we talk about everything with the bat and ball. we got a great show for you today. Again, episode number seven, you can find us on Instagram. Now, I can honestly say we probably provide the best updated news out there in any channel. Um, go to our stories on Baseball News Club on Instagram and you'll see 24 hours 7. We've got everything you could think of regarding sports and the most important things going on. Always updated, but we also have an IG ball and play. But mainly, go to our YouTube channel, ba uh, Baseball News Club. We've got over 600 videos there for you guys. Got a lot of content, but let's kick it off. Um, a lot going on in the baseball world. Mainly, we're going to start off heavy today talking college uh college baseball and softball kickoff weekend last weekend uh today is tuesday the 22nd but again we're gonna talk a lot of college talk uh update on the cba a little bit of free agent talk uh spring training uh san diego padres tom glavin juan soto matt harvey new rule proposed by mlb also freddie freeman trevor bauer ryan ryan zimmerman uh, some stadium ballpark factors, and just some other things. We've got a fantastic show for you guys, and uh, let's give a shout out quickly to our fans that are out there um, on our podcast downloading. Pandora is a big deal for us, probably about 33% of our downloads. So, thank you, Pandora listeners, iHeartRadio, Mobile Safari, and Google Chrome. And thank you for everybody out there that's supporting us. We're continuing to grow all the time. And again, like we said, we just want to talk about everything with the ball and stick. But let's just jump into this week's episode because I'm super excited. Yes, we don't have our baseball, which sucks. We don't have our Major League Baseball. But what we do have is we have college baseball and college softball. Everything's just going full bore right now. Um... I was checking out games on my iPad today. There's so much going on with college. And this is kind of a good thing because right now we can't get our fix with the MLB. And you know what? I I hate to say it, but you know, I really don't care about MLB right now. Um, that's why, you know, like not last pos, uh, podcast, but the week before I didn't do any podcast because it's just, you know, I'm just burnt out on the CBA news right now, but I'm going to talk about it today. I will be updating you guys. I'm just saying that I'm looking forward to college baseball and college softball. Millions and millions of things going on that I want to talk about. Oh, man. Uh, we could first start off with uh, well, opening weekend was last weekend. Texas Longhorns, largest opening weekend in their history. So uh, tons of fans came out. That tells you a lot about the spirit of baseball and where we're at uh, college everyone's happy that we've got the sport back so that's that's awesome news right there too so uh we did go over top players for softball uh, a few podcasts back uh, we've gone over the men's top 25 now when you look at the top 25 you kind of got to look at also who's in the top 25 the sec is going to be your big represented you know uh conference uh, you get the Vandy boys in Mississippi State, you know, Arkansas and Florida. So there's a lot represented from the SEC. Uh, in fact, they had the most preseason poll points this year. Uh, Big 12, you know, you got Texas Tech in the Big 12, Oklahoma State. So a lot of good, a lot of good teams there too. Um, actually, Texas is ranked number one and they're the Big 12. And ACC, got a lot of ACC sprinkled all over like uh, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. And then you move on to the Pac-12. 
Pac-12's got some representation going on. Stanford's ranked number four. That's going to be exciting. Uh, and then as you get further down, the American Athletic, I mean, there's really not much going on. East Carolina's ranked 11th. They're the only ones representing out of American Athletic. Uh, Big West, uh, you got like UC Irvine. But once you start getting further down, the conferences are a little bit smaller. You know, Big Ten is... Um, was in Missouri Valley, Mac in Atlantic Sun. They don't got anybody representing the top 25, but hey, we got that going for us. But again, this is awesome. The season is on its way, and it's just it's a frenzy. And in fact, I was watching, like I said, on my tablet today, I was watching some games, and Oregon Beavers just beat the, the Bajones out of San Diego 21-11. Uh, to 11. So there's a lot of good games today. Um, West Virginia lost to Coastal Carolina. Michigan played today. Ohio State. Cal Bears. I mean, just everything's going on. This is just NCAA Division I baseball. So get your baseball on. And there's a lot of places, you know, in order to watch baseball, you got to know where to go. So there's a lot of places because... ESPN, ABC, ESPN2, ESPNU, and ESPN+. Plus. Those are going to be like your uh, Big 12 Conference Baseball, Big Sky, Big South, Big 10 Conference. Uh, CBS is going to be kind of like the ACC, American Big 12, uh, ACC Network, ACC. Uh, BN Sports airs games from CUS, Big 10 Networks, airs games from the Big 10. CBS Network. Uh, games from the A10, the Big East, CUSA, Mac and Mountain West, Fox Sport Networks, that includes FS1, FSN2. Uh, they also carry the ACC, Big 12, and Big East games. Uh, Longhorn Network, of course, Texas. Uh, USA Network carries a 10 games. Pac-12 Network airs Pac-12 Conference. SEC, well, SEC. And Stadium carries the A10, American Big South, CAA, etc., you can also get college baseball in vid on Vidgo. You can get a lot of them there because Vidgo will give you access to ESPN, ESPNU, ESPN two, which you can watch games on that. FSN, the Pack uh, Pack Twelve networks, so you can get it there too. Uh, ESPN Plus, um, ESPN Plus gives you everything. I think with ESPN Plus, with Disney Plus and Hulu streaming library, all services together, I think are around thirteen ninety nine. So you could probably get. You know, a little bundle going there, and you got Hulu. Hulu also does a lot. Fubu TV. You can also get your baseball there, your college, direct TV stream, and sling. So, and YouTube. I'm sorry, I almost forgot about YouTube. So, a lot of different ways to get your baseball. But, like I always tell you guys, just go to vipbox.com. You'll have to learn how to go back and forth because you're going to get pop ups. But, hey, you've got an opportunity right there to watch baseball there's no excuses guys uh, we don't have mlb i know some of you guys are like hey you know not a big fan of the uh, mlb because people get really turned off with labor strikes and you know and lockouts it's not a fan favorite it really is it's the last thing we want to hear but we got college baseball we got college softball like i said uh in other news jocelyn allo hey dude if that isn't great news uh what is Oklahoma softball? We all know who they are. Last year, or I'm sorry, uh, she tied NCAA, and I talked about this last week on our podcast. She tied the NCAA record for home runs. She hit her 95th home run last Sunday, and Jocelyn, she's just crushes the ball. She's incredible at the plate. So her next home run, which will be any day now, will. Be the most home runs ever hit in uh, NCAA Division One. I, I think all the way around. Doesn't matter what division. She owns the record. So congratulations to Jocelyn. She is an amazing player and amazing club. That whew, Oklahoma is a just a monster club. But you know we went over the uh, players to watch out for last week. Uh, we've talked about a lot of different players in the offseason college. One player I've been pointing out to you guys, Arizona Wildcats, uh, Janelle Mayonio. She is a center or uh, outfielder for her, for the team, excuse me, for the Wildcats. She's a redshirt sophomore. She's the one that we posted on YouTube, and she's the one that I've been talking about. She's running out of the batter's box. Literally better than Ichiro, guys. Yeah, a couple of you just dropped your drinks. 
She is better than that. I've go to my YouTube channel, ba- uh, baseball news club and take a look at it. You'll see her. I'm not even kidding. Two to three steps. Definitely guarantee she's into her second step as she's swinging and hitting the ball. And I know what you guys are thinking, oh, yeah, it doesn't make you uh, a great player. Uh, well, yeah, it actually did. Because last year in 2021, she's, she had a 27-game hitting streak. She ranked first in the conference batting average, 432, third in hits, 72, and on base percentage, 483. She led the team, batting average hits, stolen bases. She was 2021 Pac-12's freshman of the year. Doesn't get any better than that. 2021 Pac-12 batting champion, hitting 442. I mean, it goes on and on. Named first team all Pac-12 and, you know, third team NFCA All-American. She is a baller and she's just hit onto the scene. The Wildcats are a good club, but I keep trying to point her out to you guys because, again, it's just I love seeing players doing something different than every other player does that's efficient. And in softball, it's a super, super fast sport, especially in the infield. You've got to be trucking down the line to first base to get on base. It's not like you can't be a slow catcher in college at the higher levels. And the fact fact that she's running out of the batter's box. I mean, literally when she's connecting, her body's going out, but her foot's still in the batter's box. Because obviously you can't be outside the batter's box and hit the ball. But she's literally as she's in running stride, she's swinging at the same time. It's the most incredible thing. I highly encourage you guys to check it out. Um, but tons of college baseball going on right now, guys. Now, out of San Diego, on another news, OJ was on the field in a white Bronco. No, I'm kidding. Uh, an idiot somehow or another in San Diego and Petco Park was able to get a, you know, the new model Broncos. They look kind of trick. They're kind of like square looking. Um... The guy got onto the field while San Diego Padres field crew was out there and this guy started doing donuts. So obviously, really bright guy, really intelligent guy, one of the best. Um, So what did the field crew do? (laughs) They did an awesome thing. They actually blocked the exit because there was only one way in to get in that area or get into the stadium so they can get to work on the stadium stuff or get to work on the field, excuse me. Um, Yeah, they blocked it with like some, with with their bodies. They like a bunch of people stood there and then they blocked with like a a tractor or whatever, you know, whatever equipment they're using. So the guy couldn't get out. And then the guy gets out of his car and he's trying to talk to them and he's talking on his cell phone and he gets back in his car. They wouldn't let him go and the cop showed up and got arrested. So, God dang, man, dumbass. Dumbass. What? It's in your head to do something like that. Now, in other news, because I want to move on, uh, one thing I want to talk about with you guys is, I, I don't know how I can say it, pitchers and catchers were supposed to be reporting last week. Kind of a, a bummer thing, because it happened right around Valentine's Day. It makes it even sadder for us, because, you know, we got to deal with our relationships and if you don't have a Valentine, it's a very sad time. And the fact that pitchers and catchers are supposed to be reporting, it makes it even worse. It made it for a crappy Valentine's Day. I think for all of us baseball fans, we are probably had the smile that hurt. You know, that grin that hurts when you're like, I don't really want to smile at this. You know, you've got your partner and you're like, you know, I love you, man. But freaking pitchers and catchers are supposed to report. Um, it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. I'm with you guys too. That's why we're trying to bring you all the information we can. Like I keep telling you guys, like uh, right now, softball and little league and t-ball. That's all been the signups are going on. There, dude, travel ball is going on. Everything's going on with baseball. It's exciting. We're gonna have Nippon and Korean baseball coming up. But again, <sighs> hang in there, guys. What I would suggest is just focus as hard as you can on. NCAA Division I, baseball, and softball. It's super fun to watch. In a lot of ways, a lot funner than MLB. And they don't have the drama. So get into it. And let's get into some other news. Ryan Zimmerman announces retirement from Major League Baseball. Yeah. Ryan Zimmerman, born in Washington, North Carolina. He's drafted by the Washington Nationals of the first round, uh, fourth 
of the first round in the fourth, excuse me, of the 2005 Major League June Amateur Draft from University of Virginia. Um, nicknames the Z-Man, Mr. Walkoff, Zim, or Mr. National. Uh, he played his whole career in Washington, which doesn't happen that often. And he's done. He's moving on. Now, is he a Hall of Famer? That's going to be the talk. Uh, you're talking about a guy that rookie of the year, number two, you know, or he was ranked number two when he was 21 in 2006. Because his 2005 year, he only had like 62 plate appearances, but he bust into the scene in 2006, 287 average, 20 homers, 110 ribbies. That's pretty damn good. Um, and he just was a solid clutch player for a while. He has been playing that many games as of yet. Uh, did not play in 2020 due to, you know, he opted out during COVID. He did play last year in 2021 where he hit 243. Um, not bad, you know, not great for someone, you know, of his standard. He has a lifetime line of 277 average, 341 on base percentage. Uh, RBIs, 1,061. Home runs, 284. Doubles, 417. Hits, 1846. That's going to be the, you know, his average with his amount of home runs and his uh, amount of hits. That's probably going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. I don't know, but he's a fan favorite. Fans love this guy. He had some good years. He had, uh, and what's crazy is just recently in 2017, he had his most home runs in his season year. We had 36 and he had 303. He had a, one of his best seasons in uh, 2017. He was also an all-star. Uh, he was a two-time all-star, but he became an all-star in 2017. Um, gold glove winner. And, you know, hey, he has been around. He's a Washington national favorite. Uh, when you think of him, you also think of postseason. He got a World Series in 2019 with Washington. If you remember against Houston, he hit 274 in the World Series, the five home runs and 17 RBIs. Hey, he's got a ring. He's had a good career. He's 36 years old. I'm not sure if that's too early to hang it up. Because um, especially with the DH and everything, he can definitely extend his career. But hey, nevertheless, he announced his retirement. Uh, congratulations to a great career. Hopefully we'll see Zimmerman you know, in some capacity in the booth or in other aspects involved in Major League Baseball. So that's what I say. Now, uh, in other news, a uh, new rule proposed by MLB to limit how many times a club can option a player from six to four uh, times for that particular player. That can hurt teams that option a lot. Like, for example, the Los Angeles Dodgers, they optioned a lot. That's going to make it tricky. But that's the proposal that MLB is doing. And I know I'm kind of dipping my toes into the CBA talk. We're not going to get into that just yet, but that's something they're doing. I don't know. That's kind of nerdy for me to be bringing that up to you guys right about now, but let's go into other news. Um, Trevor Bauer. We've got to talk about Trevor Bauer. This one's going to go deep. So kick your feet up, turn on the radio, make sure you eliminate all distractions. If you guys watched the other day and Trevor Trevor Bauer's channel. He came out, I think about five or six days ago with a video right after the uh, LA attorney uh, said they're not going to have charges against him. Right after that, he went to video and he made a video. Now, as we've been following this and reporting this to you guys all the time, I've tried to be on the fence as much as possible because it's a very difficult thing to read what the media is telling you without knowing the real facts. And only two people who really know the true facts is Trevor Bauer and that girl. And we've talked about how her, she's had relationships with many major league players, which is weird. Tatis, you know, amongst them, uh, on and on. And we talked about the sexual side of it. Uh, some people like rough sex. Hey, it is what it is, man. I mean, you can't be offended by that talk because come on, we're all grownups. Sex is a sex. Some people like that way. So it's come to the point where Trevor was able to now speak because of the ongoing investigation. He spoke. Now there's two facets to this. I'm going to talk about what he spoke about and I'm going to go ahead and speak about MLB. And we did talk about that last week. The crazy thing with this is what is Major League Baseball going to do? He hasn't broken a law technically. And again, it doesn't matter which side you're on. If you hate him thinking that he did do what he did to this girl 
in a negative way and hurt her during sex he took it too far or if you're on the other side just saying that maybe she's just a ambulance chaser a money grabber a gold digger or whatever the case you want to call it and she's just trying to get money and fame i don't know the real truth because i don't know her and i don't know him so again if we're going to be honest with ourselves and discuss this matter as grown adults or anyone with any type of iq between your ears this is i think the best way to approach it um i haven't seen much or if any talk with her in the media explaining her side trevor bauer did win uh in court in august was it where uh a judge said the restraining order she requested is struck down so that was i guess you can say in wins and losses that's a win i hate to say it that way in regards to keeping score but you understand where i'm going with this so now recently the la county is not going to file charges against him so that's another win for trevor bauer so let's go to his video now i'm not gonna talk a lot about it but i want to talk about the one thing that he said or, or the theme throughout the way he said things and what i love about trevor he hey man like him or hate him he's an intelligent guy and what i mean is i do a podcast i say the word uh probably a million times i don't intend to do it he's very well articulated when he speaks and if you're thinking while he's reading off a script no it's not he's just a freaking smart dude again whether you love him or hate him he's a very smart guy very articulated i've always said for the longest time he plans everything out he's smart all of his moves everything he does he, there's not much randomness in trevor bauer's life he's a very structured scheduled person mentally in his life mentally how he eats and does things every day and how he lives so with that said his video was very articulated. He came out and said his side of the story. He was extremely blunt. And you, I challenge you to go watch his video. Because um, I'm just going to like give you a synopsis. But I have to admit, I was impressed with Trevor Bauer. I haven't had an opinion this whole time. Because really, there's not much to have an opinion of. Because you don't know what the truth is. But he came out and explained everything with their sexual encounter. He explained the times they had it. He was very open about everything about what went on. He even says, you know, admits that, hey, I made some bad choices and who I've hung out with. He's not a perfect person. He understands if you don't like him or if you still like him. But he basically explained it was consensual sexual encounters two different times. And each time she never had a problem during the whole evening, even leaving the next day. So twice they had these things and he very much emphasized he didn't hit her in the face. He didn't punch her. So he is stating his side of the story saying, hey, this didn't really happen the way you think it did. Or the way, and he also laid into the media and some people that pretty much chastised him. And I've talked about this, how there are, and I agree with Trevor because I'm a media person. I'm reporting news. I gleam it from all over the world and other news outlets. But there are some people, and I'm talking news outlets that in social media outlets that we all love. Some very popular, loving people that I follow that I was like, mm, very turned off. And what I'm talking about specifically were where they were going all his careers over. LA is going to trade him. He's never going to play again. He's going to be suspended for two years etc etc and i mean it was just and trevor brings it up during the conversation you know he was found guilty by public opinion and it happens all the time and i see it a lot on social media you get people talking on social media they're just like you don't know you're just out there trying to make yourself look better in a conversation there's those people out there they're just looking for someone to disagree with so they can bury like it's a win it's like a video game to everybody but anyhow i challenge you to go look at Trevor Bauer, uh, his video, make a decision for yourself. But I was impressed with the, hey, I'm 52, so I could say I was impressed with the young man. As much pressure he's had, he laid it all out, guys. I'm not kidding. It's like if you have a best friend and something really bad happens, and you all get into a room when you have the right time, and you and your buddies are like, dude, what, what the hell, man? What the fuck happened the other night, man? You got arrested? You know, everyone's like, what the hell? You know, you got to tell us the truth. He was... I can tell you this, Trevor put his life, or he, he wore everything on his sleeve. He told you every detail that you probably never heard in the media. He gave you as much information as possible. 
He was disappointed by the media. He's dis- he probably lost some, you know, friends and family along the way that didn't believe him. But at the same time, he's got a strong core of friends and family. So at this point, you have to look at it. I'm not saying if, I guess there's different camps. Those that believe he did what he did and it was wrong. And those that believe that maybe this isn't what it is. I have to stay at this point. I'm still on the fence because I want to hear her talk more. But I can honestly say at this stage, Trevor's looking pretty good. And it's almost like when you talk about, hey man, David Ortiz. When his name came out on that PED list 2003-2004, things looked really bad. He rebounded correctly. He said the right things. And if it's true, he said, hey, I never never took PDs, even though his numbers went out of the roof. But nevertheless, is the court of public opinion through time, it was believable. So when it came to the Hall of Fame and the baseball writers and even the fans, a lot of fans believe he deserved to go in. I don't agree with first ballot, but it is what it is. That's the public, you know, that's public convicting people in with public opinion. So... Moving forward, it is interesting because the big if, and this again is all going to follow with after the CBA, is what's going to happen to Major League Baseball and Trevor Bauer. It's a very, I can, seriously, if you've been following this like me from day one, I've been saying it all along, I would hate to be in Rob Manfred's shoes. I'd hate to be in Major League Baseball's shoes right now, trying to think of the proper way, if any, to punish Trevor Bauer. Now, most of these guys that get punished, they get investigated by police, they get arrested, they get there's a criminal record, there's something that they do, and you know, in the courts find out about it. Trevor's not been, he's had a judge knock down the restraining order, and they're not filing charges against him. Doesn't mean Major League Baseball still isn't gonna enforce their uh, domestic violence policy. But it still makes you wonder, like, dude, if you punish this guy and she was the one that's wrong and trying to ruin his career. I'm just saying, if you look at it from that point of view, like, what about if she's 100% took it too far? Like, she did have a sexual encounter. It was consensual. And what about if she made that up? Because that's a very high probability, guys. What about if she made up that he punched her? Well, if that's the case... Again, we don't have that information. But if that's the case, if you're Major League Baseball, you don't have that. You don't have, you've got two situations that Trevor Bauer's won. He's not getting charges. And to make it worse, this wasn't like a domestic violence situation where his people drinking and partying and got out of control or, you know, a husband and wife situation. This is two people, sexual encounters. Um, if you even ask the FBI, the likelihood... Well, I'm not going to go down that road because I'm not going to be an FBI statistic guy. But what I'm saying is, is if you're Major League Baseball, what are you doing with this? You know, you're going, well, how many other cases can you think of in Major League Baseball where people are suspended and there was sex involved? I can't think of anything other than if it's, you know, like rape or something like that. Or, But this is totally different, guys. This is two people, consensual sex, that love rough sex. And Trevor even says in his video, we were having consensual rough sex he's all we were both cool with it you know and he explained how he met her online and everything so um if you're major league baseball trevor bauer hasn't been convicted of anything the judge has taken away his the restraining order that was trying to put upon him if you're mlb right now he looks i mean honestly he looks innocent there is that part of the pendulum leading that way but again guys i'm not making an opinion i'm just saying if you look at everything gathering in your mlb what are you going to do you're going to suspend him what do you do he didn't break the law because there's no laws being broken uh she's you know he's not bullying her and chasing her around because there's no restraining order involved i don't know how do you deal with this as Major League Baseball? And then the Dodgers, on top of that, you got to pay the guy, keep the guy. And the flip side, or another side of the coin, because this is like a 50-headed coin. Even if you're not his fan or a fan, the element of social justice 
and treating women negatively in a physical or mental, you guys know what I'm talking about, that part of the fans is going to be affected. They're not going to believe that he did it uh, or that he's innocent. They're going to believe there's a percentage of fans that believe that he did it. And it doesn't matter until she comes out. If she comes out and says, hey, yeah, I made up the parts about the punching. It wasn't that bad. It was consensual. My bad. Even then, people aren't going to believe Trevor Bauer. So it's just, man, it's a mess, guys. It is a complete and utter mess. If I'm MLB and I'm the Dodgers right now, I'm going, oh, man, what do we do next? Because really, domestic violence policy, there's no domestic violence technically involved. I don't know. But then again, like we've talked about, Trevor Bauer has a gigantic target on his back from Rob Manfred and MLB. They don't like him. They're going to find something. But again, it's just, I think now they're going to have to lean on his his balls. They're going to have to use his balls more. All those sticky balls they took out of the game from him, I think that's where they're going to be punishing him more versus the domestic policy. I think they might just bundle together like a little auto insurance plan, home and auto, where they go, hey, Sticky substance, you're giving them 80 games. And the domestic policy, we're giving them about 15 to 20. I think they're just going to, I don't know. It's a really, really weird situation. Now, just to be abundantly clear, I'm not taking sides. I'm not, I am full on uh, for people getting help with domestic uh, violence. Uh, last week in previous podcast, we post the hotline for domestic violence. So I just want to be clear, no shape or a way am I condoning uh, if this is indeed something, a sexual encounter that went too far? I do not condone that at all, just like the majority of us. But again, it's confusing. Now, if you want to, again, sitting on the fence, playing devil's advocate, remember her in August, her attorney uh, released the photo um, showing her, her black eyes. And this drew a lot of, you know, controversy because this is bringing a little bit more details of what's going on. The attorney said at that time, verbatim, and I quote, Look at this picture. No one, absolutely no one, can consent to this logically or legally. So that's what her attorney said back in August. Um, they sh- they gave the photo out um, because uh, they gave the photo out to basically show, you know, what happened. Now, Bauer, again, is agreeing that they had rough sex and they consented. And then even a friend um, was talking with her and said, and I quote, as long as it was consensual, I don't have to kill him. So she said it was consensual, but like didn't expect two black eyes. So here she is at one point saying, yeah, it was consensual rough sex, but I didn't expect these two black eyes. But how do you read into that sentence? Like, do you read into it like I didn't expect two black eyes after having rough sex or I didn't expect him to punch the shit out of me? I don't know. Again, it's there's not enough detail. <clears throat> um, like, he definitely took it too far, don't you think? Laugh out loud. So, like, definitely took it too far, don't you think? Like, re, uh, <laughs> like she's trying to get, uh, you know, an agreement with this person saying, don't you agree? And then she's like, laugh out loud. So, it's really weird behavior. Like, why would you say that? look like he definitely took it too far don't you think like she's trying to get an approval from that friend to agree with her or i don't know if you're attacked and you're upset um you're pretty pissed off the next day that somebody did this to you or you're very shaken i'm just saying when you look at most domestic violence victims which unfortunately a majority of them are female um look at their body language i mean just look at the gabby girl that was recently international news uh, the girl that went missing and her boyfriend killed her and then he killed himself later that was Oh, come on, I mean, Gabby Petito or whatever it is. But if you look at the video, the police videos, how she was acting, she was extremely scared. And those are the those are what a lot of the professionals are pointing out when it comes to domestic violence or it comes to abuse. You look at the mannerisms of both parties. In this case, Brian was lying on the side of the road to the police. He was acting really weird and just acting like somebody that's narcissistic. And then you look at her and she's trembling and she's scared. So there's obvious signs. Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen anything with this girl coming out. And I, I would think at this point, because of Trevor Bauer coming out with this video, why not? Why not just come out and blast him back? If you truly were abused, then you know what? Create, create a wave, man. 
if she starts making a video and starts getting advocates on her side and they start going after Bauer, they could bring him down. They could definitely bring him down. More than Robert Manfred and MLB will bring him down. And more than public opinion will bring him down. So I'm just spitballing here. You know, she went that road. That would probably be the worst case scenario for Trevor. They're not selling out of court. Um, so that's, it's just, it's so crazy. So both sides are going, hey, you know, she's not telling the truth. And, uh, you know, Bauer's attorney said back in August, and I quote verbatim, Mr. Bauer stated from the outset that two encounters had with this woman were wholly consensual. He unequivocally denies allegations in her affidavit regarding both their encounters. The woman's statements are highly inaccurate and not reflective of what occurred during the two meetings. The woman's own text messages with Mr. Bauer and other others clearly attest. Just like what I was reading to you from her friend. Um, <clears throat> she even said in her text, she it quickly became apparent he preferred being aggressive and it's okay to be a little rough so she was cool with it um the woman said she returned to bowers los angeles home on may 15th this is for the second one and agreed on a safe word so we've talked about this before i wasn't aware if there was a safe word or not um so they did because it's rough sex safe word so she agreed to have consensual sex however did not agree cons to consent to what he did next i did not agree to be sexually assaulted so that is the crux. That is the middle of the road where you and I have to make a decision or not. You could sit on the fence on who's telling the truth. That is really, you know, I, I've said before, she hasn't really came out and said a lot of stuff. This is back in August. So she hasn't, re she's been kind of under the radar since, uh, not much coming out, but she claimed that he choked her with her hair and she was trying to regain consciousness, which is part of rough sex. And then she claims he started beginning punching her face. He came out and said he didn't. So that is the hot red flag right there for me. She's saying he punched him. He's saying he didn't. That's what we need to find out. We need to find out what ha happened at that point. Because obviously it was consensual rough sex. They had a safe word. But what really happened? And that's the really hard part with this is how do we determine the truth? How do we determine what we're going to believe as fans and as human beings of what really happened in this situation? It's, it sucks uh, because I want to have a conclusion to this. But it's I think this is also going to impact Major League Baseball in a lot of different ways. Um, the CBA, when they're talking about, well, maybe not that big, but I think it does impact baseball in a lot of different levels in respect to how MLB views Trevor Bauer, how they view domestic violence policy regarding sexual encounters, because that's something you never really hear. Usually domestic violence situations like with, hey man, um, let's look at the most recent one with Marcel uh, Acuna, or not, <laughs> Marcel Azunia, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, what happened with him? So this is where the police showed up and he's has a cast because he's been injured and he had his the police actually saw him assaulting his wife well not assaulting per se he was had his cast in her throat and had her pinned against the wall could have been a self-defense thing could have been attacking her but when the police got there that's what they witnessed so that's 20 games the police see a player or Marcel assaulting, pushing his wife by the throat, choking her out with his, or choking her, pinning her um, with his cast. Now, his side said she was attacking him and he found out that she had multiple phones. She was cheating on him. Nevertheless, I'm just saying he got 20 games and that was with law enforcement witnessing it. How the hell is Major League Baseball going to suspend Trevor Bauer when you don't even have, you have two wins for Trevor. The restraining order and recently they're not going to file charges regarding the situation and then you got trevor with his story i just think major league baseball has to be very very careful with this one as much as they hate trevor bauer as much as they go after him i'm sure he and his legal team are sitting there waiting for them to cross the line because he has rights he still has rights so it's a mess it really is and like i said my guess is if Major League Baseball is probably going to lean on the suspension on the sticky stuff more. And I don't know how they're going to do the domestic violence thing. I really don't. 
Because again, when you look at other cases where the people were involved, where there is much more proof against them, their suspensions, I mean, 20 games for Marcel, that's nothing. That's nothing for that guy. Uh, his reputation, I haven't heard any rumors of the Braves getting rid of him. But let's move on to other news. Juan Soto, we've talked about this a lot before. Uh, extended no contract extension. Came out in the news that Juan Soto, who's 23, rejected an offer from Washington prior to the lockout. So, we've talked about this. We've talked about this. Where's Juan Soto going to go? His agent, Scott Boros. Mm-hmm. That just lifted the conversation to a whole different level. He's going to get paid. Period. You got Scott Boris. You can't have any better double combination. You got Juan Soto as your player. And as a player, you got Scott Boros. Two of the best in the game. Uh, he will be a free agent in 2025, but here is the theme. Again, like I said, no extended offer before. He does say he wants, in social media, he did say he wants to stay in Washington for his career. That may be interesting comment about that is Ryan Zimmerman retires. So that's a popular thing to say right now, I think, in Washington. And uh, I think that's also something Scott Boris might have coached him on or something like that, saying, hey, make sure you say this. It might be 100% true, but come on, man. This is uh, This is modern-day baseball. And players, you're looking at a guy like that looking 400 plus in the market. He could be a 400 plus, maybe $500 million player. So if you're Juan Soto, you're going to say all the right things. You're going to be smart just in case Washington is your only offer down the road, but I doubt that very much. Dude, he's going to be one of the most insane free agents, free agency signings, uh, World Series champion, batting champ, insane popular player. He turned down Get this from Washington before the lockout. 13 years, $350 million. And this was confirmed by Juan Soto himself. So, and that's, you know, we've talked about this. And this all ties into CBA too with how, um, you know, players want their free agency years lowered and their salary arbitration eligibility years lowered. And Major League Baseball is pushing up against that and doesn't want that. Juan Soto is that perfect guy. Perfect case study. If you're in college, this is a good time to write a paper. You bring in the metrics and the financials and talk about how Major League Baseball looks at it and how a player looks at it. You could do a contrast on that. That'd be a great paper to write. Uh, but you got to get some deep numbers on why it impacts Major League Baseball for the CBA now versus later for a player like Juan, if you understand what I'm saying. So you got to understand like his value before the lockout and his value after the lockout in regards to how the CBA operates in regards to free agency and players eligibility and stuff like that. Um, but with his money, he's going to make, it's going to be my God, it's going to be a super huge home run. Speaking of free agencies, one thing I see a million times right now, and we're moving on to other news is Freddie Freeman. I can't tell you how many teams I've seen him tied to. Yankees, uh, of course, Atlanta, uh, LA. Uh, a lot of teams, he's he's the man. We all know who Freddie Freeman is. Outside of putting up insane numbers, I mean, come on, the guy's, I wouldn't call him Mr. Baseball, but he's a perfect representation of somebody you want. If you want it, you know, a handful of good representative players in this league that when people look at the sport, they go, oh, okay, that's a, that's a cool player. Uh, Freddie's one of those guys. Uh, Freddie did reject a five-year $135 million back in November. That just seems low-balling to me for a guy like that. Former MVP. Um, Tom Glavin. I'm going to throw his name in the hat. He came out recently and said that he'd be shocked if Atlanta does not re-sign Freddie Freeman. That's coming from Tom Glavin. He's not just a former player, but that dude, Tom Glavin's up there when it comes to pull in Major League Baseball. Um, he was part of the Players Association for a while. He's just a very smart, uh, business-savvy type of guy, you know, corporate type of guy. I, I, I mean that in the most, you know, complimentary way. Uh, Tom Glavin is just an intelligent dude. He's that type of guy you'd want in a meeting, you know, because he just has a head on his shoulders. Uh, he's intelligent. 
So he's saying he'd be surprised. Freddie reject the offer. It's very common for players to reject offers. Doesn't can't really read much into that, but interesting, interesting, interesting. Recently, Matt Harvey was in the news. Matt Harvey's tied into the Tyler Skaggs situation. Tyler Skaggs was the former MLB pitcher for Los Angeles Angels who who died uh, due to drug overdose and alcohol. Uh, basically, they're saying according to the autopsy when Tyler died that he had fentanyl, oxycontin, and alcohol, um, and he died of asphyxia and after aspirating on his own vomit. So typical when you drink and you throw up when you're drunk and you don't wake up, you choke yourself to death. Now the theme that has been the big story has been who provided those drugs, and Matt Harvey's recently been in the news because of uh, he's tied to it. Now in this happened so a few years ago this happened with Tyler um, <clears throat> what came out of it has been a pretty big bombshell uh, a lot of drugs going around Los Angeles Angels players uh, and then Eric K is the most recent person who has been in trouble uh, he's the person who was providing <clears throat> these drugs to the players uh, even that night there's a, a text message from Skaggs, Derek K, at least the night that uh, Skaggs died, asking for painkillers. Um, it's just a mess. It was just a mess because Skaggs was found the next day in his hotel room, um, unres unres unresponsive, excuse me, in his hotel room in South Lake, Texas. Uh, he's pronounced dead at 2.18 that afternoon. Uh, they discovered a number of pills in his hotel room, hotel room including a 30 milligram oxycotton pill, additional five milligram oxycontin pills, several anti-inflammatories, and white powder on the floor. Now, their the angels were in town to play the Rangers. So this was, this is bad. Uh, the, again, the medical examiner conducting the autopsy estimated it would determine the cause of death. They did, and when they determined the cause of death, a mix of fentanyl, oxycontin, and alcohol. That's a fucking incredible combination of shit to put in your body, guys. I mean, for me, I'm 50 plus. I've never been a believer of cocaine, meth, uh, pills. I don't think I put maybe half an aspirin in this body maybe once a year if I feel a little achy. I don't believe in any type of chemical pills. I just don't, guys. And this is a perfect example. If you can't perform, I mean, dude, fentanyl, oxycontin, and alcohol, that's a freaking wicked combination of shit. So I'm not saying Tyler Skagg, you know, I'm not pointing blame. I'm just saying... Once you see these things in your arena of your life, in their room or in your car, you are stepping into a dark world. And there's a lot of people that are dying due, due to this stuff. So following the autopsy, there's been legal action. And recently, Kay has been indicted. Um, he's in a lot of hot water because he's the one that has pr produced the drugs. And, uh, you know, in the... A lot of people are upset because Kay has a history of drug abuse. So they want to know how he had a job in the first place. But during this trial, the really crazy theme is teammates Matt Harvey, Mike Morin, Cam Bendrosia, and CJ Chrome all testified Kay had provided, provided them with Oxycontin pills. Um, and then Harvey additionally testified that he provided Skaggs and with a Percocet pills on several occasions. So K on February 17th, 2022 was found guilty of two counts of relating to Skaggs death, distribution of controlled substance resulting in death and conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute controlled substances, man. So uh, Skaggs' widow and parents filed a wrongful death and negligence lawsuit against K. The Angels and former Angels Vice President of Communications, Tim Mead. The lawsuit accused the team of allowing K, who had, a, again, a history of substance abuse, unrestricted access to members of the Angels who were at risk of turning medication to assist with pain management because of the rigors of a 162-game schedule. They're saying K's basically knew better, should have known better to provide these guys with these other drugs. So, drugs of abuse. It's a... Uh, it's ugly. So with Matt Harvey involved, now with him admitting that he, because originally it was just all K, Matt Harvey could be, you know, he's had a rough career. 
Uh, he he had, it was hot for a little while back in the Mets days, and then he went through injuries, and then he just couldn't pitch. Uh, he couldn't get picked up by teams, so he's a free agent. But he could be looking at 60 days or a bunch more based on Major League's drug uh, policy. Um, it qualifies as a distri distribution or distributor underneath MLB's drug policy. So even though he's a free agent, uh, MLB is going to also do their own comprehensive review uh, potential violations of the drug program. So they can't take any any actions, obviously, because of the CBA. But again, this is... I think you guys really have to pay attention. This CBA... You know when you play uh, pinball? You have to pull the loader back or the pull the bar back and you release in all that tension hits the ball and it shoots. We're You know what we're doing right now? We're pulling on that. We've got it pulled all the way back. That's what the CBA is. And as soon as the CBA is agreed, we're releasing that thing. And that thing's going to shoot around on that pinball machine. Just go ding, 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 and go all over the place. Because we're going to have free agency. We're going to have salary arbitration. We're going to have suspensions. We're going to have this situation. What is MLB regarding their drug poly? What are they going to do to those players? Um, so there is a ton on the table uh, starting up the season. And supposedly spring training is going to start on March 5th. But again, that's just talk in the media. So, Tyler Skaggs, very, very tragic situation. And it's the more it unfolds, the worse it's getting. But again, once we get things going with Major League Baseball, things are going to start cooking. But let's talk about some things that have been talked about. You know, the CBA, I kind of don't want to touch on it that much because it's like they, they're still going back and forth. But recently they met and they, uh, the players in Major League Baseball, uh, the proposal was Major League Baseball raises pre-arbitration bonus pool $5 million to $20 million, which is obviously way off from what the players want. Uh, MLB proposed to allow one more draft pick to, to be determined by lottery. Now top four uh, players had proposed eight. So they're still way off in certain respects. But, I mean, those are little things. Um, again, that sounds like to me that they're just ironing out a few more details. But, again... Um, Owners are being a little stubborn. Now, Major League Baseball did say the start of spring training will be uh, basically start on at least March 5th. So spring great spring training games will, won't begin until at least March 5th. Uh, at least that's what Major League Baseball said last week. And they say, without we regret without a collective bargaining agreement in place, we must put, postpone the start of spring training games. So again, we're supposed to have pitchers and catchers report. Uh, they said they're committed to reach an agreement. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. So... Huh. Um, basically, then the interesting thing about that statement is the MLB Players Association came back and said this is false. Nothing requires the league to delay the start of spring training, much like nothing is required for the league's decision to implement the lockout in the first place. Despite these decisions by the league, players remain committed to the negotiation process. It just, man, the owners are just looking worse and worse and worse. The more they just keep talking about this stuff, uh, the more that they do moves, like say stuff like spring training start on the fifth, it just look it just looks worse and worse and worse for uh, Major League Baseball owners in Major League Baseball. Rob Manfred, I just wish they would figure some out. I really would like to get uh, baseball going soon, but that's all right. Let's talk. Let's wrap up the podcast, guys, by talking about park factors. Um, because when you think about players like. Nick Castellanos, uh, Kershaw, what are good places for you to go play? Now, if you're Kershaw, uh, obviously going playing for the Reds, Great American Ballpark, and the Orioles and White Sox, I mean, they've some of the most uh, very home run friendly stadiums. Uh, if you're a pitcher, you're probably more looking at Giants, Royals, Pirates, Cardinals type of stadiums. Uh, why not? As a hitter for Nick Castellanos, you're probably looking Coors, Royals, Nationals, Reds, you know, Red Sox. Uh, that's why it's surprising what you see with the Padres and what they're doing at Petco Park. Uh, not really super hitter-friendly park. Uh, Mariners, White Sox, Mets, same thing. But, I mean, if you're Clayton, where are you going to go? I mean, again, we talked about Texas. Uh, with the DH coming, that's making it interesting, too. Because I think Pools is going to find a home in St. Louis, maybe for the last season. Maybe this is his retirement tour. Well, I don't know. We'll have to check with his wife. Um, but the free agency theme has really got me fascinated. 
because I, I just, you know, there's so many free agents. And I guarantee there's already, I guess you can say, agreements ready to go. I guarantee the majority of agreements are already in place. And they're just waiting for the CBA to finish. I guarantee it. Now, they're supposedly not supposed to be negotiating and talking, but I'm pretty sure if you're a player, you got a good idea where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a, a good idea at this point where you want to go. Now, some big signings in the offseason. Uh, Corey Seager, L.A. to Texas, $325,000 or $325 million, $32,000, $32 million, God, I can't talk, $32 million average per year. Marcus Simeon, Toronto to Texas. Hey, there's Texas loading up again. They got John Gray, too. So Texas is, you know, you add uh, Clayton Kershaw on there. They got, they also Texas side uh, Cole Calhoun. Yeah, he's a vet, but he'll help out. But, I mean, these are big signings for Texas. I mean, dude, you drop $325 million for 10 years on Seager, and then seven years, $175 million. Dude, that's, that's half a billion dollars right there spent on two players Javier Baez Mets to uh, Detroit uh, the Detroit signed him for six years Max Scherzer to the Mets Robbie Ray to Seattle man that's a big one that's a big one I really like that move Kevin Gosman to Toronto I like that move too Starling Marte eh. yeah he's with the Mets I, maybe that's the right piece to help them click together but I'm just let's look at you know there's a lot of good free agents out there still there's a lot so who who's going to sign where i mean you got you know all types of different players out there freddie freeman i don't know what's his market value you think 27 to 35 million chris bryant where's he going to go who can you use a third baseman zach grinky i mean yeah he's older but zach grinky still can throw man i mean why not why not have Zach on your team? Um, Matt Carpenter. Andrew McCutcheon. I think Andrew would be a great pickup for... Dude, Andrew, I think, would be great in Texas, believe it or not. Or even... Um, sometimes I think Seattle. Uh, Dexter Fowler still out there. Kenley Jansen. That's a huge one, too. I mean, the Dodgers really have an interesting conundrum. Because, I mean, Kenley, he's... 34, but still putting up great stats. Nick Castellanos, like we talked about. Uh, Kyle Seeger. Well, we just talked about. Uh, Trevor Story, Ian Desmond. Nelson Cruz, still out there. Michael Conforto. Oh, man. He's around a $20 million player. Carlos Correa. And then you got players like Andrelto Simmons, if you're looking for a glove and no bat. Kyle Schwarber. Dude, I really think Kyle... I think he'd look great in Philadelphia. I don't know about you guys. Put him out there with Bryce. That dude, Kyle, has been in the league for a while, but he's got it figured out. I mean, you can't say in the last year or two the dude isn't top form, like he's peaking right now. So Kyle is a great pickup. Jorge Solar, you know, who knows where you can get at him. Jock Peterson, uh, Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo, man. Man. I see LA in that guy's future. I'm just going to throw that up. I mean, just, it makes sense. Uh, but hey, who knows where he'll go? Obviously, he's not going to go back to Chicago. But comment in the comments and let me know what you guys think uh, about these players, where they might be going. But I think I'm going to wrap up the podcast, guys. So I want to thank you very much for listening to Ball and Play presented by Baseball News Club. Please subscribe. Please download. Please follow us on Instagram. Please support us. Uh, as soon as the CBA is undone, we're going to be just uploading videos like crazy on youtube i haven't been uploading a lot of videos because really not much going on i'm going to start focusing on college until the cba is signed but we're close guys so let's get our games on um i was going to talk about blitz ball and wiffle ball a little bit but there's not much to talk about um i am seeing some wiffle ball leagues but i'm still seeing no blitz ball leagues where they're fielding just more pitching blitz ball is cool man you can throw that thing 80 90 miles per hour it's pretty crazy anyways let's wrap it up guys have a great week Says my signing out.